All right, here are solutions to problem 35 off the math subject GRE practice test. All right, here we're in three space and asked to find the coordinates of a point on this plane closest to the origin. That's kind of convenient that the other point is the origin there. I'm given a bunch of options. How to solve this? Uh, lots of different ways you can solve this. I suspect that a lot of people will solve this not using the most efficient manner. And I mean, that's a little bit subjective. I think the most efficient manner would be to find a normal vector to use some linear algebra. I feel like linear algebra is one of those topics that people don't know super well when they take this test. Um, if you know linear algebra, that'll definitely be the way to go. If you don't know that, you could still solve this problem uh, if you know the distance formula. So you probably know the distance formula in two space. Um, it's kind of just in, from the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's go that way. Uh, you can generalize that to three space to say that the distance between two points, x1, y1, z1, and x2, y2, z2, is given by this formula. So maybe option one, minimize distance formula. You could do that. You could figure out which of these points you could do this a couple ways. You could figure out which point minimizes this formula where x1, y1, z1 is the origin. You could figure that out, which point on this plane minimizes this. Um, you could also, since you have these points right here, you can kind of plug them into this formula to see which one gives you the smallest distance. Uh, that'd be kind of tedious, especially with the square root formula. You could minimize the distance formula or the distance squared formula would make more sense. So if I want this thing to be as small as possible, that's equivalent to making this thing as small as possible. If the distance squared is small as possible and the distance is as small as possible, because squaring is a monotonically increasing function when your input is non-negative. I think I'm using all the right terminology there. I mean, it's not even as bad as it seems because one of the points are all zeros. So really, it's just x2 minus 0 squared plus y2 minus 0 squared plus z2 minus 0 squared. And since I only have, I don't need to subscript them all with a 2. Maybe I could write it like this. So anyways, one way is to minimize this. Take these points, maybe, and plug them into this formula. First, you'll want to make sure that these points satisfy that they satisfy this equation that they really do fall on this plane. And then just take whichever one's the smallest. So for example, this clearly satisfies this because if x is 0, y is 0, and z is 1, I get a true statement. And it's easy to find the square of the distance because 0 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 squared is just 1. So any answer that will give me a distance squared greater than 1, like this guy, for example, can't possibly be the right answer. Are these guys going to end up being greater than 1? I don't know. Have to do this one might be I'm not sure maybe not It'll be hard to do squaring all these fractions keeping track of all the values you could do it but it'll probably take you a little while another option would be to say all right I have this as a function option two maybe this is green well I guess this is really still option one option one is to minimize whoops uh, the distance formula and you can minimize it either using calculus or just by plugging in the values. Using calculus is challenging. What you do when you're using calculus is you'd set this up as a function of two variables, maybe x and y, and then you'd say, all right, my distance squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared, but I don't want a z squared because I have a two variable function. So I'll solve this guy for z. Uh, let's see, z would be three minus two x minus y over three. So here's x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And I want to minimize this thing where I can take partials, partial x, partial y. You could minimize this, but it'll be a lot of work. It'll take a lot of algebra to solve for the optimal point. You could do it this way using calculus. You could plug in all the points like I'm talking about here. But maybe I should, like five minutes into this video, I haven't told you how to solve the damn problem. The easiest way to do it in this specific case would be to find the normal vector. So option two is to use linear algebra. And the idea there is, so pretend you're in two dimensions, all right, two dimensions and you have a line somewhere. 
and I want to find the point on this line that's closest to some other point. Sure, the origin doesn't matter. Any point you want. Pick a point closest point on this line to this point. It's not this guy right here. It's not this guy right there. How do I immediately know that? Well, because it'll be the point that forms a perpendicular line segment between that point and this line. Uh, that's how I minimize this distance, is I make this perpendicular. You kind of think about it, you take any other point, this point right here, and if you had, well, okay, my picture's horrible. If you rotated this thing, if you fixed this point, and you kind of took this and swung it out, it wouldn't quite reach this point. The shortest distance would be the one that forms a perpendicular. The same logic works in three dimensions. You have a plane, and you have some point that's not on that plane, and you want to find the point on the plane that's closest to this point right here. Well, you need the same idea of being perpendicular, uh, maybe I'll put it right here in my picture. Um, but perpendicular to a plane is a little bit harder to describe. Perpendicular to a plane is really what's called the normal vector. So that's this guy, normal vector. Uh, and the normal vector, let's draw it this way, is the vector that is perpendicular to any vector on your plane. So whether I'm talking about this vector here, or this vector here, or one going down here, Regardless of which one of those guys I pick, I'll get perpendicular here. And so if I can find the normal vector, that's kind of akin to finding this line right here, which would lead me to the closest point, this point right here. And the good news about finding the normal vector is it's super easy when your equation is given to you in this form right here. All you have to do are take the coefficients. So my normal vector is 2, 1, 3. How about a normal vector is 2, 1, 3? the normal vector 213 with like a T after it. So it says go in this direction. This tells you sort of how far or how long if you want to think about it that way. So I have my normal vector right here, which I can think of as 2T, T, and 3T. And so for my picture, what's going on is, I guess I have to draw another picture. Maybe this is X, Y, and Z. If I go two in this direction, and one in this direction, that's this point here, uh, with a height of three, one, two, three. That guy right there, it defines this vector kind of coming out. Uh, and when that vector intersects this plane, I will be at the closest possible point. And so how do I figure that out? Well, a couple of options. Probably the quickest way would be, wait a minute, so you're telling me that my x-coordinate must be twice my y-coordinate, and my z-coordinate must be twice my y-coordinate? This sure as hell ain't my answer. Uh, what about in this case? Is this number twice as big as this number? Yup. Is this number three times as big as this number? Yup. So this is certainly a possibility. What about here? Is this number twice as big as this guy? Nope. Uh, what about here? Is this twice as big as this guy? Nope. And this one I already concluded was not the answer from before. My answer must be B. I don't even have to solve for the point. I can see that the point must be B because of the form that it must take on. But if you weren't doing it that way, if this weren't a multiple choice test, you could figure out the answer by then saying, okay, there's some value of T that makes this vector just barely touch this plane right here. So pretend you know that value of T. There's some value. Well, at what point on the plane, where will I be? Well, it'll be two, how can I figure it out? My x coordinate will be two times this 2t thing. My y coordinate, okay, what, I, what I'm doing is I'm trying to, I'm saying this poorly. I'm gonna plug into this equation, this vector. So in place of x, I'm putting in 2t. In place of y, I'm putting in t. In place of z, I'm putting in 3t. And that will give me This equation right here. And so I can solve this equation when I got 9t, 10, 14. 14t equals 3. So t is equal to 3 fourteenths. Wait, what the hell was t again? t was just this arbitrary thing I put in here for kind of time to help me figure out what specific point I want. I want 2t to be my x coordinate. So 2 times 3 fourteenths, aka 3 sevenths. I want, maybe I can write this more legibly somewhere. Do it up here. Um, sure, two times three fourteenths. I don't think I'm making this more legible. I'm just gonna write the answer three sevenths. 
Uh, and then T, which we found below, was 3 fourteenths. And then 3 times T, so 3 times 3 fourteenths, which is 9 fourteenths, which ends up being this answer here. So even if it weren't multiple choice, you could still come up with the answer. You can get there a couple different ways using the distance formula. In addition to using the distance formula, using calculus and partial derivatives to minimize. Um, or the easiest way using the normal vector in linear algebra, whether you just figure out the form of the answer and then eliminate your choices or you solve for the answer and then you look for that answer. Either way should work.